we know you as a comedian and a host of shows such as Soccer AM. Where do your love of goalkeeping come from? As a kid, like I uh, used to play football. I was not great out um, due to, uh, well, this. <laughs> um, and so I used to go and go. And then from there, it, you know, it, it just became a bit of a love affair. And I used to always want to go and go, bought kits, became obsessed with goalies. And so it started, it started early. What made you fall in love with goalkeeping at, at such a young age? Because you look at goalkeeping now, it's not the most glamorous position, is it? Getting balls put at you all the time? No, but I just, I, I, I love it. I just love being in goal. I love, I think it's the fact that being a comedian as well, I guess I, I might like being in the limelight. Um, and it's a solitary kind of position, isn't it? So I just love diving. Like, I love diving for the balls, love, you know, facing shots, one on ones and stuff. Um, I don't know what it was. I just, I guess, there's certain people that just like are attracted to it, and I didn't really have any desire to to play out. But I just love, just love diving about. <laughs> when you grew up, who did you um, look up to as like your number one sort of goalkeeper? Peter Schmeichel. Yeah. No questions about it. My ultimate idol still is now. I had posters of him all around my bedroom. Um, he was, he was, he was everything. He was my. He was my mum, he was my dad, he was my girlfriend, he was he was everything. I absolutely love and still love him. You could probably do a shift now, couldn't they? Oh, I, do you know what? I, do you know, I've never met him. And that's like, so I've met a few uh, footballers in my time. Um, he's the one goalkeeper or one person that I would absolutely lose my mind at. If he, if he walked in right now, I'd crumble. How has goalkeeping changed over the years? Because back when you were growing up, you know, it was pretty much a complete different position to what it is now, isn't it? Yeah, so what you're trying to say is back when I was growing up, it just used to be like, put the fat kid in goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I see where you're going with this, mate. Um, but it, no, but it has. It used to be, stick the fat kid in goal, which is why I kind of wanted to become a goalkeeper. And even looking back, you know, you look at the, in the Premier League growing up, you know, like your Kevin Pressmans, your Neville Southalls, um, they weren't the smallest people. Whereas now their goalkeepers are athletes. I mean, they can play in midfield if they want to. You know, they probably get as many or well, more touches than they've ever had. You know, because it's all about playing from the back and you know being a part of the formation as opposed to just the goalkeeper at the back. So yeah, as it's changed, it's changed immensely. Like, I think I prefer the olden days where yeah. <laughs> you just shot stopping <laughs> and lumping up to the number nine. But yeah, it has changed like immensely. Yeah, well, that's where it starts from. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you think of formations, it is 4-4-2, whereas now the goalkeeper is a part of that, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the formation. Pep Guardiola wants to play from the back. Um, Edison's stats this year of pass completion, I think at 85% pass completion. And that's not just from playing from the back, that's like pinging it as well. You can ping it. Um, and I think we did a, uh, a podcast with Duncan Alexander from Opta. He said that um, Edison's pass completion rate is better than most midfielders in the Premier League. And he's better than the midfield um, of the treble winning Manchester United 1999 side. So it's, um, you need different skill sets now to be a goalkeeper, I think. Um, and we're seeing that come through, like the, the you know the breed of goalkeepers that we've got going to the World Cup, Nick Pope, uh, Jordan Pickford, and uh, Jack Butland. Do you know what I mean they are not just shot stoppers, but goalkeepers that can play from the back and play this new style of football. <laughs> We just spoke about how the goalkeeper has changed over the years. The gloves have changed over the years as well, haven't they? Yeah. So I just want you to have a little look at these. Wow. So these are Nike Material Touch Elite. Oh, they smell differently. <laughs> they don't smell like your normal glove. No, it's... <laughs> it's usually it smells like, doesn't it? It smells like, what is that? Didn't really ever smell that. Well, that's put me off that. Not put me off, but <laughs> size 10s? Uh, I think it might be size 9s. So, um, oh, the, 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 the Nike Mercurial oh. Touch Elite. Oh, let's get in. That might just be my fans. <laughs> and these are the super, super limited edition, not to retail, off white. Not um, for retail? No, not for retail, I'm afraid. Virgil Abela off white collaboration with Nike. How many pairs of these you got? Not many. Not many. <laughs> not many. It's not many made worldwide. So, um, so those gloves, uh, the designers made them. A while ago, for who he thought potentially could be the three England goalkeepers, really? who wear Nike gloves. So, uh, Jordan Pickford, Joe Hart, and Jack Butland as well. So, they all have their own custom pair. Oh, really? And cool. we've luckily yeah. been able to wangle a pair ourselves. But, um, how are they different to gloves, you know, from when you were growing up? 
Yeah, hugely. It's almost like you've gone, they've gone back to basics, you know what I mean? Because it used to be the gardening glove, didn't it? With like the strips of the back of the ping yeah. pong uh, uh, bat. And then they got bigger. You know, goalkeeping gloves, like, I remember like late 90s, early 2000s were huge. I mean, they were almost like suitcases on your hand. They were like keeping gloves. Yeah, right? they were, yeah, they were massive. Whereas these, there's nothing to them. That's it, there's no strapping. Like that's not for, that's not coming off anytime soon. It's um, oh, it's hard. I like it. That's great. Would you wear them in the game? Are you going to give me a pair? Maybe not with these. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd wear them. I'd be I'd genuinely be interested to see because, yeah, I, I'd, I'd definitely give it a go. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's weird they don't smell like goalie gloves, though. <laughs> so one thing. Um, so those are Nike. What gloves do you currently wear at the moment? So I kind of wear uh, a, a range of, of gloves. Um, I used to go onto Pro Direct um, website um, and just buy whatever was in the clearance section. Um, so I've, uh, I've owned like a, a number of gloves. At the moment, I'm wearing Adidas, um, their new Predator range. Yes. Yeah. Um, but again, like not much to them. Uh, and you know, there's like a real bit of grip to them. Uh, wear cells every now and then. Yeah. Um, but I used to, yeah, I think Adidas had been like the the number one mainstay in my life, really. Dabbled with Royce, used to have Sondico back in the day, but um, at the moment, yeah, Adidas are kind of what I'm wearing. You spoke about yourself playing there. Could you yeah. give some of your some of your all-time highlights? Um, all-time highlights, um, I kept a clean sheet at Anfield last week against the Cheshire FA, so I was pretty happy with that. Played full 90 minutes and managed to get the ball to the halfway line twice. <laughs> um, I saved a penalty from Matt Letizia last year, which I will take. Uh, not obviously he's not. He wasn't a professional one, but you know. I'm, Still, I'm, saving the penalty I'm there with Letizia. Mark Crossley. I was say, can you name the other goalkeeper yeah. who saved the penalty? Yeah, Mark well, he gave us some tips, and uh, yeah, I managed to I managed to save it. How do you save it? Did you give him the eyes or? I actually watched a YouTube video where Matt Letizia said he always goes to his right. So I just went, oh, I'm just going to dive to my left then. And it, it worked. I oh, played at Blundell Park um, last home season. To home to the famous Grimsby Town. And I played, actually, you know what, this is probably it. I played in Craig Disley's testimonial game. And it was, the team that I played in was Grimsby Legends plus me and Thomas Turgus. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the current Grimsby Town goalkeeper, James McEwen, played in the first half. I came on in the second half. I'd been on a minute and I'd given away a penalty. <laughs> Did you save it? No, obviously oh. not, mate. No, <laughs> it was a professional. We actually played against the Grimsby Town team. So really? I played against, yeah, like a, a Grimsby Town eleven, like who went on to play. So it was, uh, yeah, I, no, no, of course I didn't save it, mate. No, I've saved a few penalties at Blundell Park, but that was, uh, yeah, no, I think it was uh, JJ Hooper just absolutely tonked it, and I was, I was done. Um, but yeah, playing at playing at your the club that you love. love that was uh, that was a highlight for me. And finally, if you're having the dinner party, if you invite any three goalkeepers, past or present, dead or alive, yeah, who do you invite? Um, Peter Schmeichel, uh, Buffon, Buffon, and James McEwen, the Grimsby Town goal. Yeah, um, yeah. So those three: Schmeichel, Buffon, McEwen.